What's up, brother? What's going on? I need to tell you some things you're not going to want to hear. I need you to listen. Pleased to have with us in the studio Kevin Camps, the radioactive waste watchdog with Beyond Nuclear. BeyondNuclear.org is the website, and you can tweet him at Beyond Nuclear. Kevin, welcome back. Thank you, Tom. Great having you with us. you got to get within three inches of that mic there for us to hear you. Um, six years after Fukushima began uh, normalizing radiation exposure risks to uh, the health of women and men, men and women, the evacuees are given few options but to return to contamination is a headline. What's the story? What's going on at Fukushima right now? Yeah, my coworker, Cindy Folkers, who is our radiation and health hazard specialist, just wrote an article in Counterpunch that traced the word origin of the word radiophobia. And it turns out that it comes all the way from 1951 during the height of atmospheric weapons testing days. And it was written by a nuclear establishment type who was making good money in the nuclear establishment, had no credentials in psychology, and just dismissed everybody's concerns about radiation health damage, called it radiophobia. It's on your head. It's your fault. It's your problem. <clears throat> so that was used quite extensively at Chernobyl. It's being used at Fukushima. And so what's going on at Fukushima is the pro-nuclear Japanese government is moving people back, forcing people to move back to contaminated areas under threat of losing their compensation. And the compensation is going to end about a year from now. So people are given the choice of being uh, destitute elsewhere in Japan or moving back to their former homes, which are radioactively contaminated and keeping compensation for another year at least. But mothers who are concerned about their children's health are being accused of radiophobia, that it's all in their head. But in fact, uh, you know, they have increased allowable radiation exposures 20-fold in these areas around Fukushima. Germany did the same thing with milk after after Chernobyl. I was living in Germany, 86, 87, and, and they, you know, it was, I think, five becquerels per liter, and then they took it up to 20, and then they took it to 50, and then they took it to 100, and... You know, just because the milk was getting more and more radioactive and rather than dumping it, they just kept changing the standards, as I recall. I, right. you, well, you correct um, me if I'm wrong. The Soviets were even worse. It came out 10 years after Chernobyl began in 1996 that the Soviet Politburo had ordered contaminated foods of various sorts, milk, um, meat to be mixed in with the food supply of the entire Soviet Union and oh, wow. to, to dissipate or dilute the radioactivity. But of course, what that meant was that food that should have been quarantined and destroyed because it was unfit for human consumption now was exposing millions or tens of millions of people to radioactive exposures. The same kind of things happening in Japan where, um, well, what's really incredible is the Japanese food safety standards post Fukushima are much stronger than American or Canadian standards. So the figure in Japan is 100 becquerels per kilogram of radioactive cesium in food. That's considered legal and edible. In the United States, it's 1,200. Really? So what that means is that Japan's contaminated food can be exported to the United States and sold legally on the open market. Is it? Uh, you have to assume. There have been stories that have come out where food from Fukushima Prefecture itself was not marked as such, and it was supposed to be showing up in various parts of Asia. And once that scandal was uncovered, uh, certain countries have banned all imports from not just Fukushima, but from other neighboring prefectures. So there's been a real blowback against this deception that's going on, trying to keep it quiet, that food out of Fukushima now, is being I, I, sold. I had somebody called the other day about this who, who uh, was saying, you know, is Fukushima, the meltdown continues, the robots are dying, the, you know, they, they can't keep get a handle on this. There's enormous amounts of radioactive water continuously every day, every second pouring into the Pacific Ocean. Um, concerned that fish that migrate from our side of the Pacific to the Japanese side of the Pacific, uh, particularly, presumably large fish like tuna, uh, might be bringing cesium with them. And of course, it's, it's, the plume has already crossed the Pacific, or, the, or they might just be picking it up in the normal course of swimming around and, you know, breathing water and all that kind of stuff, uh, running it through their gills, whatever the word is for fish. Mm -hmm. uh, how real a risk is that, that, that the, you know, if you are eating uh, Pacific Ocean fish, that you may be getting a dose of radiation with your food? And, and to, what percentage of the fish that comes out of the West Coast, and particularly for people who live on the West Coast or west, west of the Mississippi, presumably, 
What percentage of that fish is actually tested for radioactive material before it ends up on our dinner plates? Actually, uh, Pacific bluefin tuna was documented in August of 2011, so five months after Fukushima began, as measurably contaminated with radioactive cesium. It had grown as a juvenile stage on the northeastern coast of Japan there, near Fukushima, had swam across the ocean and carried the radioactivity in its own flesh over to the west coast of North America. So that was five months after Fukushima began. We're now six years. And that was years. six years ago. We're now six years uh, beyond that. And so that, that plume you mentioned has contaminated, incredibly enough, the Pacific Ocean all the way from Japan to the west coast of North America doubled in radioactivity content because of Fukushima, artificial radioactivity. It already had pollution from atom bomb testing galore in the Pacific and elsewhere in the Northern Hemisphere that went on for years and decades. And then Fukushima alone doubled the registered readings of things like cesium-134, cesium-137 in open ocean water lapping on the shores of the west coast of North America. And the dynamic that you have to watch out for big time is uh, bioaccumulation, bioconcentration, biomagnification, where fish species like bluefin tuna, other predatory fish species that are at the top of the food chain are going to have a concentrated dose of radioactivity. Big fish eats little fish. Little fish is already radioactively contaminated and it just builds up. And so that testing question you asked, uh, the United States government since Fukushima began has been derelict in its duty has not been testing the food supply. It's woefully inadequate what's going on. And in terms of atmospheric measurements in the first days and weeks after Fukushima, it was revealed that something like a third of the Environmental Protection Agency's radiation monitors in the United States were dysfunctional. They were not operating. The batteries hadn't been replaced. And it you know, showed utter incompetence for one thing, but I think it's even worse than incompetence. It's an intentional downplaying of the health risks of, of Fukushima fallout. So it's the EPA and presumably the USDA who are responsible for this. I mean, these are agencies that in the, in the, with the Trump administration, they want to slash radically. So odds are we're never going to find out how radioactive our food is. Unless we turn things around. I mean, you know, to give credit where credit's due or negative credit, the Obama administration on January 19th, hours before Trump took the oath of office, finalized a scandalous uh, policy. It's called Protective Action Guidelines for Radioactivity in Drinking Water. And what the Obama administration did was increased allowable levels of radioactivity, and it depends on the isotope you're talking about, tens of times, hundreds of times, thousands of times, millions of times, depending on the isotope. It was a wholesale uh, regulatory rollback, and it was based on what the Japanese government was able to get away with post-Fukushima. The U.S. decided if it's good enough for Japan, it's good enough for us. They just sold a shop on radioactivity in water post-nuclear incident. Whoa. So who's uh, beyond nuclear.org, I'm assuming, is pushing back on this? Are there other groups? Is, is anybody raising a stink about this? I mean, this is you might want to talk about Chernobyl heart. I mean, how, you know, what's the consequence of, of eating cesium or strontium? Yes. I mean, uh Nuclear Information and Resource Service has watchdogged that attempt to roll back those regulations for decades and was able to stop it time and time again. Even during the George W. Bush years, they tried at the end of the George W. Bush administration to do this. What Obama ended up doing, despite best efforts by groups like Nuclear Information and Resource Service, was to do worse than, than W. was going to do. Whoa. Is this because of a revolving door at these agencies? Is this because of lobbying by the nuclear industry? Is this because there's some legitimate reason to do it? I mean, why? It makes the world a whole lot easier for the nuclear power industry. If they have an incident and they leave it that ambiguous, it's not necessarily a nuclear power catastrophe of the scale of Fukushima or Chernobyl. It could be something like a medical isotope shipment in a vehicle that crashes and releases its contents into the environment. Any incident all along that spectrum, these are going to be the allowable levels of radioactivity in water until the U.S. government can get its handle on things. And that could take years. Wow. So people will be exposed to, and you mentioned Chernobyl heart, radioactive cesium-134, radioactive cesium-137. Where does that go on the human body? It goes to muscle tissue, including the heart. And so Chernobyl heart is the title of an Oscar award winning short documentary from 
over a decade ago that showed that con- congenital heart defects in babies in Chernobyl are bad. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Uh, Kevin Camps, radioactive waste nucle- uh, nu- watchdog with Beyond Nuclear, beyondnuclear.org. Kevin, thank you for being with me. Thank you so much. Be right back. I need to tell you some things you're not going to want to hear. I need you to listen. Trust that what I want is the best thing for our club. Absolutely. That recommendation was a mayhem vote. Oh, please, Jack. That's just not going to happen. Jack's not. You need to hear me out. All right?
出荷の前に全部検査しないと出荷できません今は100ベクレル以下っていうことになってますけれども農家が生産している私は頑張りますよこれが何ベクレルあるって放射の要は100ベクレル以下だったら出荷できるわけですから私は食べませんよ買って食べる人は放射のメイド持って買って釣ってるってどうなの俺らは分かってんだよ罪の意識になるの作ってなって自分は食わねえけど人の人に食わせてんのどう思いますかちょっと答えてくださいじゃ関連してちょっと待って関連して今は深川地区のね農業の話をしましたもう一つ相馬の玉野地区というところの話をしますそれを含めて答えて<笑>地区っていうのは相馬市の西部にあって飯舘地区とほとんど放射能の濃度は変わらない高いんですよ山の中に入ると毎日70マイクロシーベルトっていう土地ばっかりなんですよ女性はしてます部分的にだけど畑の作物の収入の賠償金が米の農家と違って賠償されないっていう例がいっぱいあるんですでしかも住民の状況はそういう状況で生活していても自主的な地域です生活に対する保障も不十分精神に対する被害保障も不十分二重の苦しみであるそういう地域が線引きによる救済から全く漏れていっぱい残っているんですこういうことをもう一度あの国も東電も含めてその線引きから漏れた人たちの実例がいっぱいあるこういう訴えは決してあの漏らさないで、きちっと把握して、救済していただきたい、それと、この、先ほどもおっしゃったけれども、ただ自分の子供にね、例えば100ベクレルない食べ物であって、50ベクレルとか、あるいは簡易な検出器は10ベクレルぐらいからしたら、不検出になるんですよ、まあ、安いやつはね、そんな高い性能のいいやつは、なかなかそれがない。アルファパックセンベータセンガンマセン全部測れるなんてのはなかなか測って手に入らないガンマセンだけですよセシウムの普通は測るのはでそれで測って不検出なんていうものを消費者が本当に知って食べるから食べないんですよそういう内訳が分かってるからであなたも西田さんもおっしゃって私が聞きたいそれから文科省のあなたにも聞きたいから自分の子供に例えば10ベクルだからこれ不検出100ベクルよりもはるかに行っていいんだから OK だよと言われてそれを進んで食べさせたいと思いますか食べたいと自分でも思いますか医者なら食べるんですか私は進んで食べるああ、犠牲的な精神でとてもいっぱいでも子供には食べさせないんですよでそれが実態ですよ西田さんは私と同じか、まあ、私と似たような年代だからもうしょうがねえや役目から死んで見せようとあるかもしれないが自分の子供にはそれ食わせたいと思わないでしょ放射能ってのはそういうもんですよ。指導さんののんきにそこにかまか座って見せているけれども、自分の子供には食わせたい、そこで済ませたいとは思わないでしょ。これはね、国家がきちっとやんなきゃなんない本当の問題なんですよ。それがね、それを今の中間心臓追放だか、なんかで書いていない、それをきちっとやらない、最低基準だと、国は命令してにもかかわらず、当然はそれを手当てを取らないそれを大の場でこうやって見て,見て聞いて知っているにもかかわらず権限を持っているね規制権限を持っている国がそれに対してね一言も言わないこんな情けないことはどこにあるか私はね先ほ皆様の人格誇りというふうに申し上げた私は同じ人間だから皆様のことはね同じ思いで敬をいたしますよ人間としてだけどさっきの誤りの話にもあったけれども
人間としてあなた方ね相当大きく自分の職業で自分の地位を守ることはそれは必要かもしれないがやっちゃいけないところまで踏み込んでるんですそこ今どこに行ったんだチャリンに食べさせたくない素直にそういう思いはね皆さん持ってると思いますよあなたもそうでしょ小さな子供はまだ独身かもしれないだからこれから子供を持ちますよその子供になるべく保護者の方から遠ざけたいと思うんでしょそれをその自分の素直な思いを国政に反映させられないそんな情けないコケコンビなんておりやか人の命を危険にさらすんだったら自分のその覚悟を持てよ誇りからそれが人間のもちろんねあのお尻にお尻にこりでございますなかなかその世間一般のっていうことで言われる方としてですねなかなかそうなっていない実情でございますので、まあ、そうしたらこれはきちんと外省で対応していくという形でございますあの先ほどあの福島の方を、えー、食べれるのかというのをご指摘いただきました、えー、これはあの福島県の方では例えば、えーまあ、経産省の方にもですね実はその福島県産の、まあ、お米の口コマ役みたいなのがですねございまして、えー、そういったものについてもですねあの私はこれ個人的な話でございますけどもあの買ってですねあの家の家族とも一緒に食べたりしているところでございます、まあ、こういった形であの福島県の農家の方々の風評がですね、まあ、少しでも大変ですればですねこれはやはりえー、そうした形に持っていくべきというふうに思っておりますので、えー、我々としては、そうしたやはり安全なものは安全、やはり本当に危険なものは危険なものとしてです、ね、きちんと対処していかなきゃいけませんが、安全なものは安全という形で,です、ね、これは風評の回収に努めるということをです、ね、我々としても、えー、努力してまいりたいと思います。これはあの単に賠償だけの問題ではなくて、えー、農業政策の観点からです、ね、そうした風評の回収というのは、これまた、農水省の方でございますけれども、彼らもまた努力しているところでございますので。えー、やはり国としましては、えー、何回も申し上げますけれども、そうした風評回収に向けた努力という形で、ですね、えー、福島県農家の皆さんの活動をです、ね、サポートしていきたいなと思います。はいそういうこと